Officials announced on Tuesday that a division of the Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO, has effectively created the nation's lightest bulletproof jacket, which is made to withstand the highest threat level, or level 6. A DRDO official release claims that the jacket provides protection against 762 by 54 r API ammunition and was developed using innovative materials and techniques. The front hard armor panel HIP, of the jacket is a standout feature, capable of withstanding multiple hits, up to six shots, of 762 by 54 r API sniper rounds, in both ICW, in conjunction with, and standalone designs. Recently, this bulletproof jacket was successfully tested at TBRL, Chandigarh. The aerial density of ICW hard armor panel HIP, and standalone HIP is less than 40 kg per square meter and 43 kg per square meter respectively as per media sources. What sets this jacket apart is its ergonomically designed front HIP, crafted from a monolithic ceramic plate with polymer backing. This design not only ensures maximum protection but also enhances wearability and comfort during operations. The Indian Air Force successfully tested an air-launched ballistic missile that can strike targets at a distance of more than 250 kilometers, marking a significant advancement in capability. Known by its common name, ROX, the Israeli-made Crystal Maze II air-launched ballistic missile was tested by the Indian Air Force in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. According to top sources in the National Security Establishment, a Su-30 MKI fighter jet successfully test-fired the missile last week at a test range located on the island in the Andamans. The region under the Tri-Service Andaman and Nicobar Command, which is currently led by an Air Force officer, is where the test fire preparations were carried out. Because Made in India provides a unique capability, the Indian Air Force is currently looking to acquire Israeli missiles in considerable quantities. The missile, fired by the IAF from a Su-30 MKI fighter, goes upward before accelerating toward its target. The Israeli-made Crystal Maze 1, which was first used by the Indian Air Force, is completely different from the Crystal Maze 2. The Indian Air Force IAF, intends to utilize the Crystal Maze 2, an extended standoff range air-to-surface missile, to target valuable stationary and movable targets such as the air defense systems and long-range radars of their rivals. The missile is said to be effective against targets in an environment where GPS is unavailable, such as the one India encountered during the Kargil War. Even in locations where air defense systems are in place, ballistic missiles can still be effective against their objectives. According to reliable sources on Tuesday, India is scheduled to get the final two regiments of S-400 Triumph surface-to-air missile systems from Russia by the end of the next year. This revised timeframe was established in response to supply delays caused by the conflict in Ukraine. Under a 5.5 billion US dollars agreement, Russia has already given India three long-range missile systems. India is acquiring the missile systems as part of its efforts to strengthen its air power capabilities, mainly to address China's security threats. India signed a 5.5 billion US dollars contract with Russia in October 2018 to purchase five S-400 air defense missile systems, despite the United States warning that moving forward with the contract could result in US sanctions under the terms of the Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act (COTSA). The India-Kuwait Investment Conference 2.0 was held on Tuesday by the Indian Embassy in Kuwait. Additionally, a Memorandum of Understanding was inked by the two nations to exchange knowledge about innovations and technologies in the financial and regulatory ecosystems. The Indian Business and Professional Council IBPC, the Union of Investment Companies UIC, and the Kuwait Chamber of Commerce and Industry KCCI provided assistance for the conference. On the sidelines of the conference, India's International Financial Services Centers Authority and Kuwait's Capitals Market Authority CMA signed a MAO to collaborate on sharing information concerning the application of technologies and innovation within the financial and regulatory ecosystem for the development of financial markets in respective jurisdictions, the Indian Embassy said. As per the reports from IDRW.org, a new notice to airmen, NOTAM, issued by India covers the period from May 1, 2024 to May 3, 2024. This NOTAM, which covers a 985-kilometer radius, restricts airspace and raises the possibility of a ballistic missile test. It's crucial to remember that the precise nature of the test cannot be conclusively determined from this information alone because military operations are secretive. The shutdown of the specified airspace, however, is a reliable marker of an impending ballistic missile launch. 
For complete clarity, official confirmation from Indian authorities regarding the reason for the specified airspace closure and the revised notum would be required. China has requested permission from Islamabad to send security personnel to Pakistan in response to the deadly attacks on its citizens, according to an opinion piece written by Aisha Siddiqua, a former director of naval research for the Pakistan Navy and senior fellow at King's College London. The article was published on Tuesday and was picked up by Nikkei Asia. Reliable sources suggest that in 2016, while Nawaz Sharif was prime minister, Islamabad was on the verge of agreeing to Beijing's demand. But the Pakistan army, then under the command of Raheel Sharif, stepped in and formed new military divisions with some 12,000 soldiers assigned to guard CPEC installations. Since then, these forces have not been able to successfully stop attacks against Chinese labor. Further, in her opinion piece on Nikkei Asia, she stated that the recent attacks on foreign nationals have raised serious concerns about the security of Chinese workers and investments in the country, jeopardizing the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor CPEC, projects. The integrated airdrop test of the crew module, a crucial step in the ambitious Gaganyan human spaceflight program, is about to happen for the Indian Space Research Organization ISRO. The test is planned to be launched from Sriharikota on April 24 according to a report from ISRO Chairman S. Samanath. In order to guarantee future astronauts' safe return, this vital experiment attempts to confirm the crew modules and its essential parts, most notably, the parachute system, function. The successful October 21 TV D1 flight last year was followed by this impending test, which represents the second significant milestone. The primary goal of the TV D1 mission was to test the spacecraft's ability to abort using the crew escape system. During the airdrop test, the Gaganyan crew module will be tested in a variety of scenarios that mimic real-world mission conditions, particularly the re-entry and landing stages. The module will be lifted to a preset altitude by an Indian Air Force IAF, helicopter and then released to descend. With the help of this controlled descent, ISRO will be able to collect crucial data regarding the module's operation in the presence of gravity and atmospheric circumstances that are similar to those encountered during an actual re-entry and landing. For the Gaganyan program, this airdrop test's successful conclusion will represent a major advancement. The information acquired will be crucial in improving the design and guaranteeing the crew module's secure functioning for upcoming Indian human spaceflight projects. A 95 billion US dollars package intended to help Taiwan, Israel, and Ukraine was approved by the Senate after months of delay, according to CNN. For Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell, who has been a steadfast supporter of Ukraine despite growing resistance from some in his own party, as well as President Joe Biden and legislative Democrats, the bipartisan effort represents a major win. The complete measure, which is currently awaiting President Biden's signature, combines four laws that had previously encountered obstacles in the House and Senate. This legislative accomplishment comes after an uncommon Saturday session in the House, during which almost 61 billion US dollars in aid for Ukraine, over 26 billion US dollars for Israel, and over 8 billion US dollars for the Indo-Pacific region were passed. Notably, the package includes provisions to increase sanctions on Russian assets and contains language that could lead to a ban on the popular social media platform TikTok. Under the bill, Chinese parent company ByteDance is given a nine-month ultimatum to divest from TikTok or face a ban from American app stores, a move aimed at safeguarding national security interests. That is all from YKS Team for now, thanks for watching and keep supporting!